people as well. So it sounds great, right? But then no, they leave out this massive tiny little detail. I say massive tiny because it, it seems insignificant at first, but it actually plays into a lot of other things. Yeah. The language. It's like the language barrier just punches you a little harder when you try using the same facilities these students do use. For it to be a foreign language to university, you would think a lot more people would speak English. In, yeah. Not even English, they would have like English papers mm -hmm. or, or even a French chart. papers or a chart or yeah, something. Yeah, a language chart or just like showing it to you and it's like, which one? Because they say that you don't even have to take language courses here. You can just take the culture courses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But hey, my little fairy foxes, we are back again with something a little more serious this time. We are going to be talking about the university that we're currently going to in Japan called Nagoya University of Foreign Studies, or NUFS for short. Mm -hmm. um, there's, it is a wonderful opportunity that we've had, and we and they really help a lot with extracurricular kind of things, like to go and get more involved or go travel a little ways with their excursions and things, but there are a lot of problems that we've experienced. Me and Kiari have both been here since August, it's now July. Nicole, who is over here, hi, um, she's been here since March, so she's only been here a semester, but these are some of the problems we have all experienced being here for this long and some things that could be changed for the better, and if you decide to come to Nuffs, you might have to end up dealing with or hopefully they'll change for you and you'll have a little bit better time so i'll open up to these guys to start talking so i can have my cookie <laughs> <laughs> okay so i think the first thing that we want to talk about um as you as you probably heard from earlier nicole talking about access to facilities being a foreign studies school you would really think that it's easy for international students to figure out where things are are well or at least they give you some guide to where these things are at first no man no yes and the handbook they give you is in japanese so when say when me and dakota first got here both of us have not studied japanese i took one class but it wasn't i didn't learn enough or that much stuff to even close to understanding anything yeah like japanese being taught in another country you're not going to get anywhere near the level that they'll teach you like as beginner level here in japan yes. so literally we get our book the only day i learned for okay for japanese for those who know you're gonna learn hiragana katakana and kanji well i've learned hiragana and i learned katakana where everything's in kanji I knew no kanji, so literally for the first half, like we're like, okay, I want to join this club, I want to do this. We had the hardest time, and in Google Translate, majority of the times is wrong. <laughs> so it's like we have to try to figure out: Do you know where this club is? Can you tell me where the club is? We can try to look and find it ourselves, and hope that Google Translate's right, and that stopped us from going to like different clubs and like different opportunities because we literally just couldn't figure out where the destination is like yeah, where the, the meeting place is mm -hmm. the times like locations when it even starts because apparently clubs don't even start for the first like week or two of classes or something yep. we didn't even know that much no nope. there's not a lot of communication like telling us important things like that and uh just to reiterate on the kanji thing to read just a normal newspaper you need to know like a, a thousand, thousand to almost 2,000 kanji just to be able to read a Japanese newspaper alone and a lot of Japanese students to me like every time they talk to us and ask us hey how's learning Japanese they're like yeah Japanese is hard for us too and they're university level students who are like honestly struggling with their own language I can thoroughly say kanji, kanji helps once you learn them it helps a lot but it's the fact that you have to I'm uh I'm level two and even with my level two and uh, we're level two kanji mm -hmm. we're only by the end of this semester we sh we only know 300 yeah That's, we only know 300 that'll be 300 there's still like what three or four more books yeah that before we we're like even close to the average Japanese person mm -hmm. before, and like it's easier to read writing really the hard part yes Yes, writing and speaking as well. Speaking, yeah, speaking. is like the next level because that's where that's where it really shows what you understand and what you've already practiced. And I'm just saying that a lot of the time, a lot of the 
plain form conversations that they say in textbooks don't actually match up in real life because just an example they say that when you want to decline someone's um, invitation to you to go somewhere the way that they teach you is to say sumimasen chotto Dead and you just that. like just just leave it hanging like that when in reality i have tried using this myself you're supposed to put a reason at the chotto yeah and they don't in here they didn't no say no they didn't um, let us they're like no just say sumimasen chotto and they should be able to understand i'm like bitch nah nah i tried using it on someone and they're just looking at me waiting for me to say something i'm like oh well get fucked i guess that goes with the teacher too because my, my sister last time she was like Yes, was like sumasen choto, but at the choto you have to express your reason why you can't go. So I've just and stopped. speaking of teachers and classes, a lot oh of the times God. they teach, they treat you like your high schoolers. It's not just the foreign students; like Japanese students in general are super like we have. To, we're not expected to go to the bathroom during class, and classes are an hour and thirty minutes long. That is like thirty minutes too long for a class in my opinion and <laughs> and like if you get up to go to the bathroom during class the teacher will write down what time you left and what time you come back and will add up all the times at the end of the semester and they will deduct that as you're like this is how much class you've missed yeah and like you're not allowed to eat in class either like, I can understand, like, if you had a full course meal, but, like, a snack or something, we have a ten minute break between each period. And first and second period is usually whenever we have our grammar portions of our, of our day. And we have ten minutes in between there to get, like, our breakfast or get, like, some coffee. And if we don't finish our food immediately when class starts, the teachers are like, hey, put your food away. Or... You can be like me whenever I'm tired and done with it and just not go back to class until I finish eating my food and end up missing out on class time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just to just to go back with the language part a little bit, just to elaborate a little more and stuff, it's like as at least I don't know about other universities, but for the university that we go to as an actual foreign studies university that greatly encourages and pushes their own students to learn English or some other language. You, you would at least expect their own students to, you know, practice some English, right? No. No, that just doesn't work. That just doesn't happen. Like, when you're asking for directions, for example, no. If, even if they know that you're a foreigner, they'll still bust out their Japanese. They won't even... If you don't know any Japanese, they're not gonna bust out at least some English words to help you get by. Because that, that's my experience when I first started here. Like, even though mm -hmm. I've already studied Japanese for a while before that, I had a break in between, so I didn't remember a lot about mm -hmm. how to speak i remember how to read stuff but not how to speak and that is a pretty great difference if you wanted to get from one place to another yeah and let me just say that while we are saying a lot of probably things that sound really harsh you have to understand that we've been having to deal with this over the past few months it's built up and there aren't all bad things like there's a lot of great things about this university and about coming here to Japan and trying to speak another language but these are a lot of things that you're just gonna have to face and learn to deal with mm -hmm. and more on a serious note whenever it comes to nuffs like with their money they have a stipend that they give us which is very generous of them they give us the equivalent to 600 US dollars or 60,000 N here and while that may sound like a good bit they take rent out and then we also have to pay bills electricity and gas yes. and by the end of that you have 285 after rent uh, dollars and then you have your electricity bill and gas bill which take out probably around 50 or 60 as long as you use your electricity and gas sparingly if you're someone who loves to take hot baths every single night and loves to run your AC 24 7 you're probably gonna run it upwards of a hundred something dollars between the two of them together being around hundred something that leaves you with a little bit for money for food and stuff mm -hmm. here they don't put as much preservatives in their foods so it ends up going bad a lot quicker uh, what I was going to say, the thing that really, what really surprised us the most is we were excited about our stipend when me and Dakota first got here about a year ago. We were so excited about our stipend. We were like, okay, you know, we're not going to have to worry that much. We're going to have a stipend. Okay, we knew the rent was going to be taken out too. That was broken down to us. However, our bills were not. 
we were not told how much bills are even an average about what this bill costs what this bill costs any of that so literally we get our bills and we're just like what is this and they add in also a health insurance because we have to even though we aren't citizens or anything since we are living here we have to take part in the uh national health insurance thing mm -hmm. and that's about ten dollars a month which once you start adding up bills and stuff that's a lot especially whenever you didn't expect it ten dollars is a lot it can get you a lot of food sometimes and like the health insurance bill i was like what is this like i remember we went to we had a meeting and they was like okay here they give us an envelope in the envelopes is five months for your health insurance and we're like what we have to get three different insurances because our university requires us to get an insurance. Plus here we have an insurance. And then, and then don't forget like some, like I think some are like our college. Like, yeah, our university, we have to get an insurance for our university. Yep. So, so like we have, technically we have three insurances and even, even the few times I've been to the doctor, I'm like, what's the point of all three of the insurance is like am i getting the money back because i one doctor with it was kind of expensive they're not as expensive like back at home like we expected them to be able to speak english because they would they hand you out during orientation a list of different clinics and places that if you have different kind of emergencies and don't want to tell necessarily your RAs about it and you want to be able to speak to someone who speaks English you can go there but the but the university hospital that we went to they were completely like almost no English like it took until she got to the doctor for her to get anywhere near English and also it was nothing but male doctors so if you have female problems it's a lot harder to find a doctor that you're comfortable with and it's just that length the language barrier especially for someone who's new Come to Japan, yes, they have English and things around there, true. Like, you started going to restaurants. Being a I'm... tourist, like, tourist-level things, I'm sorry to catch you off. <laughs> tourist-level things, it's easy to get around. Like, if you want to come here as a tourist, it's wonderful. But student-wise, it makes it really difficult when you're trying to communicate certain things. Yeah, I was going to say, like, going back to, like, tourist things, I was going to say, you start, like, what I started noticing, like, a lot of places, like, started putting English menus out because they're getting, like, so especially, like, you know, you go to Sakae mm -hmm. or Nagoya, like, they have, a, like, English menus. And even some of the cafes around here, mm -hmm. they started putting English menus out. But as for speaking-wise, mm -hmm. no. No one speaks. Like, maybe the bigger cities, you have a better chance of someone speaking English. Like Nagoya, which is a big city, but where we stay, which is Nishi, which is kind of like a countryside, you have to try to figure things out. Like, you have to try going to a restaurant. If it's just you pointing, because that's what we did a lot at first, I was like, uh, yeah. this, this thing uh. right here, yeah, that. Because it's like a lot of times it's like, I can't read the kanji. And, that kind of, to me, that kind of breaks up the experience as well because I was like, it's like sometimes it's like, oh, I want to try. Look at the kanji. I'm like, oh, there's no furigana. I don't know this kanji. Let's go with something I can pronounce. <laughs> so it's just like, I can't, I can't, can't do it. But the school itself is just, they're very disorganized. Mm -hmm. Um, just recently, uh, we were supposed to receive our full stipend because they're, they're nice enough to not charge us for the rent at, and the, and stuff at the end. But originally in the, whenever we first came here, it was, it said in the website and stuff that we wouldn't have to pay for the last month of bills. That's what we were, our understanding was. But instead they wanted $50 just up front to pay for the bills. Now that's fine and good. Okay. Fair enough, but they wanted us to pay them their $50 on July 2nd, whereas they were paying us our money on July 3rd. And a lot of us were like, barely have enough money to like buy groceries. Because they, I think someone was like, well, you got your stipend like a week or two, like a week and a half ago. I was like, well, the day that we got our stipend was the day that we had our end of the day meeting where we got our last set of health insurance bill and we also got our other two bills that we pay on the regular basis 
also that had to get paid. So you had to pay, I think health insurance was like 30 something dollars. Yeah. So you had to pay 30 something like dollars for that. And then say if you had your electricity bill or something, that's like 30 something dollars. Then you got your gas. Say your gas is like 20 something dollars. You just spent like $80 right there mm -hmm. out of your check that just got taken out. So it's and like then you have to go get groceries and go feed yourself. Which is, you know, maybe, you know, a healthy $50, you know, $40 if you want to, like, stock up for at least a week. Mm -hmm. And you also have to think that you have to survive, like, what, a month? Yeah, a month, yeah. yeah? So $50 for a week, that's 50 50 50 50 and the le if you spread it out evenly. And that's pretty much all of your money gone. Yeah. Because you pay, say you pay, you pay the 80 for the bills? 60 to 80 for your bills, just just on the kind of expensive side. 60 to 80 for your it's bills. It's like $180. No, $280. Yeah, yeah that's basically all your money. money. Yeah. yeah, all you your 280. money. Yeah, that's so all. So literally, like, trying to live off your stipend is really hard. It's very like, difficult. Like, if I stayed here for only a semester, it probably would have been a little more comfortable. Like, but it's so difficult, like, to be able to study abroad. Being Studying abroad is a wonderful experience. I really recommend anybody do it I have learned so much being here mm -hmm. but it's so it's such a deterrent like knowing that even with help it's hard I saved up so much money like I tried my hardest to save as much money as possible before coming here and mm -hmm. it's fine and um, whenever I came here at first it was fine but then like right here at the end it's like okay like not really and then the job the let me say quote unquote job offers that we get is where basically they offer us tutors so we do tutoring uh english tutor, or language sign whichever one you would like to call it well when you do language sound you get you get a day and then it's ten dollars an hour which is basically your lunch period you'll sit down and talk to japanese students if they decide to come and speak to you and you'll talk to them during the lunch period and then the sister school that is also beside us, NUAS, mm -hmm. they come and they offer us to be able for like a four week period, four to six week period, usually mm -hmm. we could sign up during a certain period of the day, either like an hour or 40 minutes or so, mm -hmm. to go and talk to their students over at um, their school, NUAS. And it's $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. But the only, like, I really, to be honest, I enjoy language lounge. Mm -hmm. Like, talking to the Japanese students. It's the most interaction, sorry, go ahead. Oh. I was just saying, it's the most interaction that you probably have with Japanese students. Because other than that, uh, we have culture classes where Japanese students usually are in it. But usually only out of, like, the 20-something, 24-something students, there may be one, two, three Japanese students. Yeah, and literally, like, but literally, Japanese students, one, you know, they might not speak Jap uh, English that well, or I, I might not speak Japanese, I don't speak Japanese that well, but at least we, we, we figure out something so where we can communicate and get to know each other, and you actually, you know, you end up making some friends that way as well through the language on, which I think the language on program is pretty good and a good way for international students and Japanese students to at least interact and meet with each other. Sometimes it feels like we're separate. Mm -hmm. Because, like, Japanese people are, tend to be shy. And if you don't speak Japanese well, I feel really nervous trying to speak to someone. Because I probably, know I can't speak that well. And they'll probably not come up to you because they're worried about their English. Mm -hmm. And although their English might be really, really well, like, they don't want to, like, it feels like they don't want to try and go halfway with you. Like, we can both have our dictionaries out and try and figure something out. But it really feels like some of them are deterred by that. Now, there are the uh, exceptions, of course. There are some Japanese students, like, there's one girl, Akane, the girl mm -hmm. that we met. She, like, came up to us and started talking to us, but I feel like she wasn't, like, I don't think she was, like, raised all the way here. A lot of students who've already studied abroad or were born outside and brought in, they're very, they're much more open to speaking and trying to tackle the language barrier. But most Japanese students are very shy. That's the best way to put it, is shy. <laughs> yeah, very, very shy. <laughs> and like specifically, like these problems that we've been talking about, like with money, the language lounges, they are very wonderful, but whenever they cheat you out of money, it's not 
awesome. <laughs> Me and Kiari here, we both attended the same like Nuas language lounge and we attended Nuff's language lounge. She didn't come to all of Nuff's language lounges, but she did go to all of Nuas's. And whenever we were supposed to have gotten our money, it had, I, like, she and I both went to Nuas the same amount of times. They only gave her half of the money and the time that she was there. Yep, and I was told that I'm supposed to speak to the, since there's two separate schools, I'm supposed to go to the, to communicate to the sister school, but to, But the sister school is, like, not even a language school. They're, like, an art and design school. And while they are sister schools, it makes it that much harder to try and communicate with somebody like, hey, where's my money? Uh, like, I don't know, like, I don't know who, who, like, I don't know what the next step is. Who am I supposed to contact if something goes wrong, if that makes sense? Like, I can't, like, at George, say when we're at George Southern, literally, it's just me searching on our website. This is who you talk to. I can shoot an email, whereas not many people use their emails here so I would have to figure out who the person is find out where they are in the in this sister school whatever building they are and then try to talk to them in person to figure out where it is I can't shoot an email especially like if I have to type one up in Japanese completely Japanese I could probably do a basic very basic thing but I can't explain like everything that I want in that email but it's really hard especially since it's not like it's not as convenient there you go. It's not it's not convenient as it is at our as our home university. And another thing with the money, recently they told us we had a meeting, a departure meeting, and they told us they were going to pay us the full amount on July third. July third comes around and we see that there's only two hundred and eighty five in our accounts. And at first we were like, Okay, well maybe if they split up the, the payments, they'll pay the rest later. We get an email shortly into our morning and they tell us that there has been a mistake and our rent has been taken out taken out on accident again, uh, again. Now that's, you know, understandable, but there are so many of us leaving. Almost everybody in this program has been here a year or has been here a semester and they're leaving. There, uh, There's like 140 of us that are leaving, maybe 20 that aren't and they had this happen. They should, they've been doing this so many semesters, you would think they would have fail safes or they would have somebody double checking because a lot of us need that money to send parcels home. Mm -hmm. I think the main issue with the money is that, okay, if you make the mistake, that's fine, but we won't be able to receive the money until two weeks later. Until July 20th. They a lot of us leave, some people leave before the 20th. Some people are leaving right after the 20th. Like, some people are wanting to travel and like those last few classes, like some of us have our tests the week before. So the last week we're like, hey, we have an extra week where we can go travel and go do things. And some of us are gonna have such a much harder time doing this because we're gonna have to close our accounts and do things. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that until we receive our full stipend. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Like it's a lot of a lot communication, communication, communication. I cannot stress how the communication is here. I mean, all I ask is like, for example, last semester we had they they changed over the credits. So where classes that were four credits were now eight credits, classes that were eight credits were now sixteen credits. We were never informed. No one told us until the end of the semester and then people started looking at our grades. They changed it mid-semester. They didn't send an email. They didn't put a notice up. They didn't even give us any indication of, hey, we're boosting the credits. So whereas we're thinking that, okay, this class is four credits. Okay, this class is eight credits. We're okay. We're good. People are looking at the thing. I, I thought my transfer was a mistake when I saw, a mistake when I saw it. I was like... Eh? Like, why does this say, why does this say eight credits? This, this should be just fours. And then I'm, at this point, I went home during the break. So I'm, I'm texting Dakota like, does yours say this? Like, did yours change? Like, is it just mine? And no, they didn't tell us anything. Like, I ended up emailing one of the people in the international office and he had to tell me he was like is this is this gonna cause a problem like and, I'm, and he didn't seem to understand the fact that 
Yeah, whenever I got into this, I signed up for enough credits for back home thinking that I had 8 credits and I was trying to get to 12 or 15 credits close enough to what I would take back at my home university. Mm -hmm. Because that makes sense. But whenever I was taking intensive, it was supposed to be 8. It got bumped up to 16. I could have just taken intensive and had the number of credits I needed flat out. Instead, I ended up taking like 22 credits which is outrageous. I would never, ever take 22 credits in my life. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, now that we knew, like, I, I'm doing intensive this semester, and I'm just like, okay, I have my intensive class, and then I did one of the English talk classes or culture class, which is what they'll call it, and I took one. That is it. I have 18 credit hours, but literally my main focus is my Japanese courses and my English class is just something that I just really wanted to take. I didn't really need to. I just really wanted to take the class. And the results for me for that was I took intensive last semester and was so discouraged by the weight that all of those classes were and how like in, like intensive. I thought intensive would be like a very thorough understanding of Japanese. No, it was intensive as in accelerated, as in like you're like studying, always taking tests, taking tests, taking tests. I was not prepared for that, never having taken Japanese before in my life. I got burnt out really quick. So this semester I ended up taking semi-intensive and I, I'm back at 100 level still, but I was in this, the upper, upper part, the 110B, because uh, I sectioned off into two sections, the beginners and then like the kind of like upper level, so 110B. And I ended up taking that in two culture classes. And I only have classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that has been so much better than it was last semester. I'm not burnt out. I feel very energized. I can actually travel, do things, go out with friends, and do things like this right here, and not feel like I am literally dying and failing as a person. <laughs> like, I, I can agree. With me taking intensive, it it tires you out. It You will seriously be tired out. And... Even just me taking, but even I just intense class, like I feel like I'm just completely burnt out. It's like majority of the semester I've spent coming home, go to class in the morning, maybe take a nap, wake up from my nap, study for the rest of the night. To wake up in the morning again to study a little bit before I go back to class because I have a test. At that point, I had tests every day, and they slowed it down, so I don't have tests every day, but I still have two to three tests a week or four times or four tests a week depending on uh, how the schedule is so like this week I only have two tests whereas next week I have four tests that I have to study for so I have a test every day also just as another note you guys the language classes are definitely a bonus I would highly recommend you take those classes take a semi-intensive though so that you don't burn yourself out as quickly as possible if you don't want, if you want to live but yeah, if you still want to be able to do things, mm -hmm. travel in Japan and go out with friends and, you know, enjoy studying abroad, I really recommend you do semi-intensive. Mm -hmm. And at that point as well, like if you do semi-intensive, you can take other classes as well, like more cultural classes. Or if you're really, if you're really confident in your Japanese, go join a club, sure thing, do what you want to do. But just be careful with those cultural classes as well, because online, their resources aren't always updated as often as you would hope that they would be. And so, things change last second a lot. Like mm -hmm. this semester they were supposed to have a cooking class, which a lot of us were looking forward to. And mm -hmm. last semester they were supposed to have a cooking class too. But last semester apparently the person got pregnant or something, I'm not 100% sure. And then this semester the person who was going to teach it was like, no, I'm going to put priority on a different class and decided to just cancel it. Mm -hmm. So it was really disappointing to hear that. Exactly. So like be careful of what you choose, always have backups and look carefully at what their outline is because there are some, obviously you don't know the teachers that are going to be teaching you, but mm -hmm. a lot of the times the kind of, their teaching style will come out in the outline that they give you. And I'm not going to name names, but there are some teachers out there that will just look at their outline as a summary of how the semester will go. Basically a summer, summary of this whole experience that I can tell you is pretty much feel like you're going back to high school academically like honestly like you have the freedom of yeah you're living alone in a whole nother country and you can go out and do things and you don't have to show up to class because you know you're but you're expected to like there's a lot less leeway so the attendance policy is ridiculous is, i'm sorry it's ridiculous 
for example, I'm in I'm in intensive Monday through Thursday. Okay, Monday through for now, Monday through Wednesday, I have class from 9:10 to 12:20 with the small 10 minute break that Dakota discussed earlier. That's three days. I still have class on Friday, although it's just from Thursday. I mean, on Thursday, thank you. We don't have Friday classes, which is nice. Which is nice, but by the time you get to Friday, it's like... You want to die and sleep. It's like, I just want to sleep. So, like, I have... So, from 9, 10 to 12, 20, that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, I have a 9, 10 class still, and then I have my culture class. So, either way, I'm still on campus till about 3 o'clock. So... I go to my classes, Friday comes, you have your break. But when you're in class so long, it's just like, uh, it's, it's so like draining. Because a lot of the time, they stretch out something that could be covered in one period and stretch it out over three periods just to keep you in class. And a lot of times, they give you just worksheets. Like tomorrow, me and Nicole have our 110B class, and it's just review. I bet you the entire three hours, we're going to be doing probably four or five worksheets and that is going to be the entire class and if which i think is crazy so like they have since they're doing tuesday thursday it's still three hours for them but if you miss say like i've overslept some days and like i miss my nine o'clock class and like i i wake up say i wake up i miss the class and i wake up at like 11 something well class was into 12 so i'm just like okay i'm just not gonna make it well me missing that day counts as two absences because I miss first period and second period. Although this may be one class, you would think that it's just one absent. No, you're getting counted as two absences because you miss two periods. Which to me, I'm like, if it's the same class, it should just count as one. And I personally think that attendance, attendance shouldn't weigh that much heavily on our grade. For the fact that many of our home universities, I know there's plenty of us that have classes that have no attendance policy at all. Because at the end of the day, if you show, you're responsible you, for your own education. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're responsible for your grade. So if you choose not to come, then that's on you. That's your choice. But if you're able to find time whenever you're doing your own thing to study and you can come and show up on the test and make the test, that should be all that matters is you showing that you're still learning the material. They don't see it that way. And it's really disheartening whenever it feels like the teacher can automatically, just because you maybe upset them, just automatically fail you. Like, it's For a example, bit harsh. one of my culture classes, he's making it so that everyone attends the very, very last class by saying that if nobody attends, they will claim us all. And so, if, for example, like me, I've been to every single class for that particular class. And if I decide to just take the last day of class off, just as a day off, because I've been attending every single other one, no, I'm still going to fail otherwise. It's ridiculous, man. And I have to reiterate, like, there are a lot of wonderful things. Like, next week, we're going to be going on an overnight trip. It's going to be really nice. It's really far away. That means a nice long bus trip for us to all talk to each other and have fun together. And we're going to get to see a, the Uzumaki Whirlpool. We're going to get to stay at an inn. We're going to get to see a castle. Like, it's all wonderful. Like, all the excursions are well put together. You get to travel within a good radius of the school. Like these are just problems that we've encountered that, that we just really need to talk you. about and mm -hmm. warn you about because these are things to expect and it may sound really harsh. It may make you kind of iffy about coming, but I recommend I've been through all of this. I would do it again. I would just wish that somebody would tell me more about it and I was better informed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it has been wonderful here. Like the area is nice. It's not too close to the city. It's still like bigger than, you know, where I live and the people that I've met here are, you know, just like you'd meet at university, you know? Some are good, some are bad. You get along with some more than you get along with others. Like, mm -hmm. I don't regret coming here at all. But we're letting you know this is what you're going to have to deal with. And hopefully Nuffs will change. Hopefully Nuffs will do some things, hear these things, because we filled out questionnaires and we're like, hey, this is some things that you should change. And hopefully the people who are here have made enough noise that something will happen. But until then, like, this is what we can tell you about Nuffs. So yes, most definitely, most definitely. It's been a something of a year. <laughs> it's year been an experience. For, yeah. for Nicole, like, um, it's just been... Any closing thoughts, Nicole? Hmm. 
I think no matter the duration of your semester abroad or study abroad for that matter to correct myself it's always going to be a learning experience taking both the good and the bad no matter which one outweighs the other it's all part of the learning experience and I can guarantee that it will make you grow and develop as a person you'll you'll be more worldly you'll understand people and different cultures even if you don't want to learn about them, you will still learn about them because you come across these people everywhere you go. There's nothing you can do about it. So you might as well embrace it. Take it on as best as you can. Keep an open mind about things. Don't don't look at people with already some assumptions in your mind and things because that's just closing yourself off on so many other discoveries that you can probably enjoy at some point in your life and you wouldn't even have thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. So just take it all as a learning experience just to develop yourself further and have I fun. think that's what really that's what really matters isn't it yeah yep. mm -hmm. just grow as a person and have fun mm -hmm. have so fun. thank you guys so much for watching I know it's kind of long and there's a lot of information to unpack but I'm glad you sat through all of it and I hope I see you all in the next video bye oh look Nicole <laughs>